Hey guys, it's the Coincy Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to so please do so. But just click on the button below and hit it subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be bringing you new videos on Unity with iOS. The reason why I wanted to do this is because I want to build a bridge that is going to allow us to talk to native code from our Unity application. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing, which is to create a new project that is going to allow us to learn how to create an iOS bridge whenever we need to do a plugin. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna use version 2018.1.10 F1 because that's the one where I have the iOS package. And then the name of the project, I'm just gonna call it Unity iOS Bridge Essentials. And I'm also going to make this available on GitHub. So if you're interested in downloading it, just check the description of this video. So, and then just go ahead and click create. It's going to create the project. So one of the things that I always get asked is, Dilmer, how do you find out how to communicate with watchOS and Unity? And that's one of the things that I've always been wanting to make a video on in how we can communicate back and forth. But I think before we get to that, I think I need to do a basic tutorial on how to create a bridge. So my goal for this video is to start with, you know, showing you how to create a bridge. Videos we're going to be building our knowledge to be able to do the watchOS implementation and then basically control Unity from our watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some setup and I'm going to go into file, build settings. I'm going to be adding the new scene, which is going to be the sample scene that just got created. We're going to go into iOS and just going to click on switch platform. And it's going to switch the project to be iOS project. And then I'm also going to go into my game view here and I'm going to select the, and it, this doesn't really matter what you select. I just, I, I'm really comfortable with these views. So I'm going to make sure that I select that view. And I'm also going to create a canvas because we're going to be basically triggering uh, an alert from Objective-C and then sending that information over to Unity. But we're going to be executing an alert that is native to iOS. So I'm going to do just a simple canvas here, double click it to get close. And then I'm also going to create a background so that we start with something dark because it's easier to see when you do, if we do black and white, the buttons are going to be white. The background it's going to be, it's going to be black and then I also like that style for some reason and okay let's just make this a little bigger here and then we can just resize it perfect and then so this is going to be the background and then the next thing that I'll do I'll just create a button let's go ahead and go to UI and then it's going to do a button and I'm going to make this button much bigger so let me just go ahead and select it I'm going to make it something like that I think Think works and then I'll just do zero zero we're gonna place it in the in the middle and then I'm going to also change the font size so let's go ahead and increment it and then this is just gonna be show alert and I'm gonna be adding a lot of videos about communicating you know to native code for now we're just gonna do an alert I think that to keep it simple okay so that's going to be our app right there and then this one let's go ahead and rename this is gonna be show alert button perfect and then i'm going to start working on some of the implementation that will need to communicate this button to the native code so some of the things that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to create a plugin and that plugin is the one that is going to be objective c code and the way that it's going to work is the objective c code is going to be binding to the c sharp code and then whenever we hit an action it's going to call into our c code and then our C code is going to call into our Objective C, and then Objective C is going to basically com communicate with the native code. So let's go ahead and start by doing creating a folder under assets. So I'm going to do a folder, and then this is going to be plugins, and then I'm just going to create another folder. This one is going to be iOS. Perfect. And then here I'm going to create a new file. It's not going to be a C sharp script, but we we're going to need to create a file, and this one, because I'm going to have a lot of different things that I want to do with iOS, I'm just going to call it iOS plugin. And then I'm just going to go into our finder here and then rename it to be MM. 
because that's going to be the implementation for our Objective-C code. And we can just remove this meta file. Awesome. And then let's go back in here. It's going to, okay, now we have a plugin and you can see that it shows as being available on iOS. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So I'm just gonna go into Assets and then open C Sharp Project. And we're going to be, let's go ahead and browse to it, Plugins. And then you can do this, what I'm gonna do in, if you wanna do it in, in Xcode, you can do it in Xcode. I'm going to do it in VS Code just so that we keep everything here. But of course, if you do it in Xcode, it's gonna be easier because it's gonna show you some of the IntelliSense. So I've done this a couple of times, so I think I'll be fine. So the first thing that I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to have to import the foundation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna open and import actually the foundation namespace. It's gonna be foundation and then that H. And as you can see, I don't have IntelliSense, but that's okay. And then we're gonna to need to create an interface. This is going to be iOS plugin. Awesome. And then we're going to be inheriting from an S object. Perfect. And then I'm used to C sharp, so don't do that. <laughs> this is gonna be N. And make sure that you don't do that because it's that's not how you basically close uh, an interface. So, and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to create the implementation of the iOS plugin. So I'm just gonna say implementation and then iOS plugin. And then we're gonna be basically implementing that. I'm also gonna do an end here. And I'm gonna have a method that is basically going to be launching the alert. And I want this class to be static. I don't need to create a, an instance of this class. So I'm just gonna say alert view. And then we're gonna be passing in a string. So I'm just gonna do an S string, trying to, trying to keep within the boundaries of Objective C, and then this is gonna be the title. And then the next thing is gonna be the message that we're gonna be adding. Make sure that you include the columns. Some of these syntax I know I'm not gonna get right, but we'll fix it when it compiles. And, and then this is gonna be alert. We can just do show alert at the end. Awesome, I think that's fine. And then the last thing that I'll do is curly braces. That's what we're gonna need. Perfect. And then the other thing that I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to have to create an, a, a UI alert. So I'm gonna say UI alert, controller, and this is a new way that Objective-C requires that you do this. It used to be a little bit different, so we're gonna follow the new the new standard and not the deprecated version. This is gonna be a alert controller with title. And then we're gonna be passing in the title of the alert we also need to pass in the message. And then it's gonna be message. Perfect. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to pass in the style. I'm gonna say prefer a style UI alert controller a style alert. Awesome. So we have that piece done. And the more that I think about, the easier that it will be if I do it in Xcode, but let's just keep going and then we can fix anything that we need to fix. So this is gonna be an action, UI alert action. I need to create a, I need to create an action. And then I'm gonna create a new object of UI alert action. Action with title. And then this is going to be okay. And then we also need to specify the style of the UI alert. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. UI alert action style default. Perfect. Then I'm gonna have to do a handler as well for this. Uh, otherwise the alert it's not gonna show. So I'm just gonna do it down below. And then this is gonna need a handler. The handler is going to have to do let me see if I can find that character. There we go. And then this is gonna be a new UI alert. And this is something that I just you know, found online on how to do the new alert. And I'm honestly copying that as, I, as I'm typing it in. So all you need to know is that you need to create an alert. And if you, if you Google how to create an alert, there are a lot of documentation in the Apple website on how to do this. And that's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm not gonna lie that I'm, that I'm copying this from that article that Apple released. 
So, and then this is gonna be default action. And then I also need a self, present view controller, alert, and I want this alert to be animated. So I'm just gonna say animated, yes, and then completion. And this is if I wanted a callback. I don't need a callback, so we're just gonna set it to nil, which is null. Awesome. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do, that I'm gonna need to do is I'm not gonna have to, I'm gonna have to be bringing in basically the controller that Unity has. And I'll show you how to do that once we get it built. We're gonna basically add the Unity controller and then that Unity controller is gonna be the one that is presenting this alert. So I'll show you that once we build it because I don't remember exactly what it is, but I'll look it up and then show you. And then the reason why we need to do C is because that's how we can bind to our C-sharp code. So this is normal, you know, what Unity explains that we need to use. And then we need to match the, we're basically gonna be saying alert, show alert. And this is gonna match a method that we're gonna have in Unity that we're gonna be importing. And so for now, just know that we're gonna have to do underscore show alert, and then I'll show you what we need to do in Unity. And then I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm writing C code now, and it's gonna be a const, a constant, and it's gonna be a chart. I'm gonna be passing in a title, and then another constant also a chart and I'm gonna be passing in the message. Perfect. And let me just go ahead and do my curly braces there. And because this is gonna be a static class, a static method with basically a static a static class, I'm gonna be passing in, I'm gonna be calling it this way. So I'm just gonna say alert view, just like we have here. And just by the way, this is not a static class. What I'm saying is we need to call our static method. So the plus symbol denotes that this is gonna be a static. And then what I need to do is just call alert view and then pass it in the title and then also pass it in the message. And I can guarantee that the syntax here is incorrect, but I'll fix it, like I said, as soon as we we build this in, in for iOS. Okay, so we have the first part done and even though I think we have some syntax errors, I'm going to be moving on. So the other thing that I'm gonna need is I'm also gonna need a iOS plugin that is gonna bind to this meta. So I'm going to go and create a new folder here. And this folder is gonna be called scripts. This is gonna be our folder in, you know, in Unity that we normally create. And then I'm gonna have a un uh, new class. This new class is gonna be called iOS plugin. And this is gonna be the one that is binding to this class, which is C objective. And then the one that we're exposing through C. So what I'm gonna be calling this one is gonna be iOS plugin and it's gonna be a C sharp file. And it looks like this is complaining for some reason. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity and then see what Unity is complaining about. Okay, so let's go ahead and create it this way. So it's gonna go here and I'm gonna say iOS plugin. I'm also gonna create another class which is gonna be basically binding or UI. So I'm just gonna call that one. We can just call it UI bindings. Perfect. And now we can go ahead and I'm gonna close out of VS Code and then reopen it so that it recompiles our code. And when I say code, we're, I'm talking about the C Sharp code, not the MM code. And okay, so we can start with our iOS plugin. So I don't need any of these methods, so I'm gonna remove them. So the first thing that I know that I need to do is I'm gonna have to check to see if this is iOS. So I'm just gonna say if, if I can type Unity iOS, and then we can add our n if here, or we can just do an else. And then the other thing that I'll do is I'll just end or, and I'll show you why we need to do this. Perfect, so the first thing that I'm gonna need to do is I need to bind to our C method. So if we look at our C method here, we can probably just hide this piece. This is the binding that we need to do. And to be able to do that, we have to do DL import. And then we're gonna do internal has to be capital I, internal. And then this is a way that you can actually import, basically binds this method right here to the method that we're gonna be declaring. So it's gonna be a private, static, extern, void. And this is this has to match the signature, so I'm just gonna just copy it there. And then it's gonna have a string and also a message. Excellent. And this doesn't do anything other than it's basically binding to C. And then this is gonna complain because we need to bring in the using system runtime interrupt services. All right, 
And then now we need to add a method that we're going to be calling in within Unity. It's also going to be static void show alert. And notice that this one doesn't have underscore because this is the one that we're, it's going to leave in Unity. And then this one is the one that is going to call or native one, which is going to be title, comma, message. But I only want this to work when we're running in iOS. And that's why I added the compiler flag in here, Unity iOS. But if somebody else calls it from a different platform, let's say that we're running this on Android, I don't want this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say debug the log error. And then I'm going to say that this is not supported. Show alert is not supported on this platform. Perfect. Or we can say it's only supported on iOS. We can just say that it's only supported on iOS. Perfect. And that's excellent. And then we have, so, so far we have everything that we need to be able to communicate with this method right here. And then we're basically exposing this through C code. And then we're binding or plugging to that method by making sure that I have a DL import. So, so far so good. So the next thing that we need to do is I need to actually call the method from somewhere and that's where I'm going to use the bindings. So let's go ahead and let's go into our binding class here. And then I'm going to be adding a new button. So this is going to be button and then we can just say show alert button and then I'm going to make it serializable so we can expose it. I'm also going to be bringing in the using statement. We can close out of that for now. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating an on-click event. And then this is going to be show alert. Perfect. Then right now I haven't created a show alert, so I'll just create it here. And then for now, I'll just hard code, hard code the title and the message. So the way that it's going to work when I click on that button, we're going to add a listener on the on-click. And then this method is going to execute. And then we're going to call into our iOS plugin. And then I'm going to say show alert. And then we're going to say hello on the title. And then on the message, we can just say world. Perfect. And now we can just put this on just one line since it's just a one liner. And then I don't need this update. Perfect. And then I don't need this using. So I'm just keeping this clean because I'm going to be checking this in. And in fact, we can just do that with this as well. We don't need that. And it's just going to keep it very, very clean. And then we have our iOS plugin here. And I think everything else looks good. So then the last thing that I need to do is I need to bind our button to the UI bindings. So I'm going to go into the canvas and then we're going to we're going to add the UI bindings. I'm going to drag and drop the button. And then that should be everything that we need. And I know from experience that this is not going to work the first time, but like I said, I'm going to be I'm going to be fixing it. So this is going to be show alert. So I'm going to be creating multiple scenes as we work on more implementation. And OK, so that's so my goal for this is to be able to add as many plugins as necessary and then show you different examples. All right, so I think I think I'm good there. And then the next thing that I need to do, I need to build this. And I think everything let me go ahead and go ahead and go into player settings because I know this is not going to work the first time. And I'm just going to start the version of 1.0.0. And I'm going to change this to be iPhone and iPad. Okay, that's fine, but I'm going to run it on the simulator. I think that works. And then I know that this is going to complain about not having different graphics because the simulator doesn't support metal. So we're just going to add the open GL ES3 and also number two. And then the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to say come Delmar Games and then I just kind of copy the name of the project. Perfect. And then let's just also start the build at 100. Okay, I think I'm happy with everything that we have here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna click on file, build settings, and then we're gonna go ahead and click on build. And I'm gonna say that I'm gonna put this on my desktop. This is gonna be the show alert demo. We're gonna build it. And it's gonna take few basically a few seconds, so I'll just continue the video as soon as it's done. All right, guys, so this finished building, so let's go ahead and look at it. I'm going to open up the project. And before I build it, I know it's not going to work. So I want to make sure that the syntax is correct 
in our plugin. So one thing to know is when you create a plugin, it creates a basically a plugins folder under libraries and it's gonna have our plugin. So you can see iOS plugin. Okay, so it looks like we have a couple of errors in the script as I as I noticed and a couple of things in here. You need to close the parentheses here. And then I need to specify I need to specify the message. So let me just make sure that I that I fix it that I fix this. And that should be everything that we need. And then the other thing that I need to do also, and I told you that we we require to do so is we need to be bringing in a new import which is the UI kit forward slash UI kit that H. And then this allows me to access the, the Unity UI view controller. And the way that I can access this here is I can change that from self to be the Unity view controller. That way I don't need to create a new instance of this and then try to create a view controller. So, and then the last thing looks like this is syntactically correct as well. So let's go ahead and fix it. So it's gonna be title. And like I said, if you do this in the if you do this in Xcode, it's a lot easier because it has IntelliSense. So it's much easier to find out if we had errors. Can I initialize, initialize a parameter of type a string? Oh, okay, I, see, I think I know why. Because this is actually uh, an a string and you can just pass in a chart. So we need to do an a string and then let's see if I can find the, the string with UTFA. And then if you do it this way, we can do we can do that and I'm also going to do the same thing here on the message passing the message there we go now it's syntactically correct and then I think everything everything should be fine now and this is because I haven't done objective C in a long time so as you can tell I it took me a while to get it working all right now let's go ahead and build it and it should be almost almost ready and once we get into this and we, you know, you start working on Objective-C a little more, I, I would start getting familiar. And in fact, I haven't touched it in, in months. I've been doing a lot of C-sharp. But, you know, with practice, I think we, we can all learn pretty quickly. Okay, so it should be launching here in a minute. Let me go ahead and build it. And I thought it was going to, oh, there we go. So here is a simulator. And we should be able to see the button that we bound in Unity. Okay, so it's launching and should be almost there. We should see the Unity logo at any time. And if it doesn't work, it should just crash. But if everything works, we can see that it shows our label. And then if I do show alert again, you can see that that's all working. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. And on the next video, I'll show you additional ways that we can communicate with native code. Thank you guys. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you on iOS and building a bridge, let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much guys.